guys. Hope you're all doing well. My daughter wants some kind of fish cakes. We are not going to use jackfruit this time. I'm going to show you what I have here. It doesn't look like much, but this was a big bag of mushrooms that my husband picked uh, last year in the fall. And we've got lion's mane in here. We have oysters. This is what I'm using. But what I did do is I rinsed them underwater and then I squeezed all the water out of them. But don't forget, I had this in the freezer. Now, if you don't have mushrooms in the freezer like I do, of course, you're going to need mushrooms. So you could get some oyster mushrooms, button mushrooms, any kind of mushrooms you want. And you want to freeze them overnight. Come the morning, you want to thaw them out, give them a good rinse under hot water, and just squeeze the life out of them. You want to be left with mushrooms that has no water in it. Because if you're using fresh mushrooms, it's going to be a very soggy mess. Okay? So I have my bowl here on the side where I'm going to throw everything in. And I'm going to start taking some of these and I'm going to hand chop them. I do not want to just put these in the food processor because they're going to be, the bits are going to be way too small. So you just want to give them a nice hand chop where you get bigger bits, smaller bits. And they're going to be super, super delicious. Freeze your mushroom first overnight. Come the morning, put them under hot water, and then just squeeze all the water out of them. Now, you could also make this with jackfruit if you want. If you find you don't have enough mushrooms or you didn't buy a lot of mushrooms, you could also put some jackfruit. So you can mix it, jackfruit and mushrooms. Mushrooms are very good for you guys. They have so many minerals. I am going to leave these out and I'm going to cook them tomorrow or I can freeze them again. Some people say, well, why if you defrost them, why will you freeze them again? Because they're just as good. Trust me. I could take this batch, put them back in the freezer and mark it washed. And that all I have to do is throw them in a pan and cook them. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside for now. And I have my bowl with my chopped up mushrooms. Okay, now to this we're going to put onion, of course. You know, if you want to use a food processor, I guess you can. You'll probably end up getting little bits. You want to be able to feel some of these under your teeth. Some celery. I'm using half a celery, but I might use more. We'll see. Maybe a whole celery stock would be nice. And if you're not vegan and you're saying, well, that's not fish, well, then don't call them fish cakes. Call them just delicious cakes. There you go. Or mushroom cakes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we have some seaweed here and I want to make sure because I'm not sure if you ever noticed a little seaweed like this when you wet it gets very big but I am not going to wet these I am going to put them dry and you really don't need a lot and that's going to help give that fishy taste I should get scissors maybe it's easier with scissors because these could expand. Now, if you don't have this type of seaweed, uh, you could use um, seaweed chips. And you could crush some of those in there. I don't even need the taste of the fish anymore. But Okay. okay. Now. I'm going to use a little bit of Old Bay. I make this Old Bay. So if you're looking for a recipe, you could either buy it. Of course, you don't have to follow my recipe. Uh, you could go to the store and buy it. It's Old Bay. And usually you use that in fish recipes. So I am going to use about a tablespoon of Old Bay. There you go. I do have a little of lemon pepper, 
you could use just a little bit of this I take like a couple of pinches of lemon pepper and this is something else you could actually make yourself if you dry the skins of lemon and then blend it up with some coarse pepper you get some delicious lemon pepper add some salt to it and boom you're done okay Normally I put parsley, but look what I got here. I just want to show you. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cilantro. I am definitely going to put some of this in here. And cilantro is so good for you. It takes all the heavy metals out of your body. So this is good to be juiced. Uh, when I make salads, sometimes I put a big handful like this in it. Really, really good. So I am definitely going to use a nice amount of cilantro. Here we go. Beautiful cilantro. I will definitely add extra celery off. Okay. And I'm using stem and all, guys. And it doesn't have to be super, super thin either. How much you want to put, again, it's up to you, right? Your food, your recipe. If you like cilantro, put a lot of it. Parsley, if you want to use that instead. There we go. And I'm going to add some extra celery. Now, if you want, you could even add some chickpeas. I'm going to use chickpea powder, but you could add some chickpeas. Remember, when you're vegan, you really don't need to have the taste of that fish or the taste of that meat. Vegan food is delicious. So, I mean, you want to call them fish cakes, call them fish cakes. They rep they look like the fish cakes I used to make, but there's no fish whatsoever in here. So, I could just call them cakes. And these you could deep fry or you could pan fry. Can even put them in the oven if you want okay so now we have our bay in there okay we're gonna add a little bit of chickpea flour you want to be able to gather this and form a shape so you need things that's going to help you do that so Here we go, some chickpea flour. And I forgot to put some salt. Where did I put salt? I don't remember. Definitely need salt. Salt again to taste, guys. Hmm, I know what I'm going to put there. Keeping one, two, three of mazeka flour. And we're going to add some regular flour. I'll see if I need more as I do it. Remember, you want this to stick together. You do not want it. To... You don't want to lose your ingredients, right? Okay, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, you want to use a little bit of good olive oil. I'm going to make you, I'm going to move you for a second. 
We're going to use a little bit of magic powder. Not that, oop, not that much. <laughs> I'd say about a, a teaspoon of magic powder. Baking powder, I guess. You can call it baking powder. Just a little extra flour. I use about a half a cup. Dip your finger, taste for salt. I'm gonna put a little extra obey. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. That's perfect. So I did use half a can of horn niblets. And remember, if you find that it's not salty enough, it's not the end of the world because you could always shake some salt on top of your meal, right? All right, I want to put a drizzle of maple. And we're going to add a little bit of warm water a little bit at a time guys and remember you really can't make a mistake with this because if you add too much water just add a little extra flour which I will later on Okay, a little extra flour. We're just going to keep adding flour and water till we get the texture we want. A little bit of water. And a little extra flour. Now that corn flour, the maseka flour, makes a great glue, believe it or not. A little more flour. You really don't have to add. Mm, this is really good. You don't even need eggs. Right? No eggs in this recipe. I want it to become like a nice thick paste. And that's about it. She looks good. Oh, I didn't put any heat in this. Now let me go get some heat. A little bit of heat. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna shape my cakes and then when I cook it later on, you'll get to see what it looks like. Okay, let me just move everything over. I use, I'm not sure if you can see it, I use about a scooper of it. And you're gonna want some flour. You could even use breadcrumbs if you want. And you shape your cakes. Okay. Off to the side. Make another one. There we go. Press. go off to the side pretty easy huh and the best part is you can actually freeze these you can make them and freeze them for a rainy day
But like I said, if you don't have enough mushrooms, that's not the end of the world. Open up a jackfruit. You could even use artichokes, believe it or not. But yeah, who says vegan food isn't good? Who doesn't like mushrooms? One of the healthiest foods on the planet, especially the ones you pick yourself. If you're a forager, I've got some great recipes for you. And if you haven't gone mushroom picking, guys, make that maybe a new hobby of yours. Even if you haven't picked mushrooms before, just go out and look at all the different mushrooms. Like come springtime now is morel time. I'm not sure if you ever bought morels, but you'll seldom find it fresh unless you're going to a market. And not always. And if you buy them dry, holy moly, they're expensive. So later on when I cook these, I am going to make also a sauce for us. Okay, another thing you could do is just wet your hand with a little bit of oil. And then it's easier to press down. So I am going to make, with a little bit of ground flax, I'm going to make a small egg. And to give it that citrus, I'm going to put a little bit of citric acid. That's going to give it a nice tang. See, you thought my recipe was over, right? And because I'm using cilantro, I'm going to use the zest of a lime. We're just going to let this sit a bit so it gets nice and gooey. And then we're going to bread it with some pan cup. A little salt. A little miso. has a nice tang to it okay so we're gonna take our cake we're gonna just put it in then we're gonna take it out there we go just looks nicer right eh? There we go. Off to the side. Okay. Cake. Whip it over. And then onto our panko. All right, guys. I'm going to continue doing this. And uh, I'll see you when I'm cooking them. Okay, guys, I had some cashews that I have been soaking. They don't have to be soaked long. If you don't want to soak them, you could add hot water to it. Let it just sit like a half hour and you're done. But I've had mine soaking, and I'm going to make a beautiful cashew sauce to eat with our fish cakes. So now how much I'm using, it really doesn't matter. I never really measure. It's just you have to get enough water to make it either a very thick sauce or if you want a more liquidy sauce then you will have to add more water it always tends to get a little thicker if you put it in the fridge uh, especially if it goes overnight but that's not a that's not a problem either if it gets thick on you in the refrigerator just add a little bit of water and you dilute it and you're good to go so i'm gonna make some sauce okay here we go we're going to make a beautiful green sauce so i'm going to be using some cilantro and we want to put water but 
over the nuts. And then if we need more, we will add a little more. We will add a garlic. I'm going to put a whole clove of garlic. We're going to add salt, of course. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt. We will add a little bit of lime juice. Well, not a little bit. I'm going to add a lot of lime juice. I'm going to start off with one lime. And I'm sure I'm going to need more. handful of cilantro now here's a little tip that I do uh, when I use when I use the leaves for a recipe I save the ends and I use that to uh, to blend up I love cilantro. It gives such a nice, fresh taste to your food. And what's good about cilantro is it actually elim eliminates heavy metals from your body. Again, how much cilantro is really up to you. Okay. I will put a little bit of maple. Here's an ugly leaf. for salt. Mm. Delicious. I will put a little extra maple though. Now, it looks nice and watery, but when I put this in the fridge, it might thicken up on me. So if that's the case, I will add a little bit of water. Mm. A little bit of black pepper. And a little extra salt. Remember, salt is really up to you. Okay, and we'll put this aside for later on. Mm, very good. Okay, so I made these yesterday and I put them in the fridge. And now we're going to bake them. the oil from my asparagus. If you're looking at counting calories, you gotta get yourself a spray bottle. Okay, that's one, two, three. You know what? I'm gonna probably cook all of them if there's leftover. Erica could have lunch tomorrow. And 
I have two left. I'll freeze those. So a little bit of oil on top. There we go. And into the oven. I'm going to put these at 400 and I'll tell you how long I cooked them for. is going to go into the freezer for another day. Alright guys, I'll see you once they're cooked. There's the rice. A little bit of seaweed. Chips. Look at these guys. Aren't they beautiful? I'm going to give Erica the bigger ones. There's one there. And here's the other one. And of course, I'm going to put a little handful of asparagus. There we go. And there is dinner. A little bit of homemade fish cakes, asparagus, a little bit of rice, and you need to try these. I'm going to let Erica try them and she'll tell you what it's like. Okay, Erica. Yeah. Want to give these a try? Put a couple more of these in here. Mmm. That looks delicious. Want a knife or you're good? Um, I think I'll be okay. Mmm. Mm. You can hear the crunch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I steal some of yours and then you can have an extra? I'm going to try very hot. Too. Be careful. That's delicious. Let me see. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. I did good. Mmm. Soft inside, a nice crunch on the outside. Yeah, the crunch is perfect. Mmm, very good. Alright guys, if you give these a try, come back, let me know what you think. And I'm going to say I love you, and I'm going to see you in my next video, guys. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.